Danube begins in the mountains of southern Germany and transits almost 2,870 kilometers to where it enters the Black Sea. One of the biggest problems faced by the Danube is the excessive input of nutrients, nitrogen and phosphorus, into the system really over about the last 50 years. And this really began with the Green Revolution that took place in the 60s and 70s where you saw skyrocketing application and use of artificially prepared fertilizers and this led to a huge increase in the load of phosphorus and nitrogen to the Danube and ultimately to the Black Sea. The problem with too many nutrients is you get something called eutrophication, which is effectively excessive growth of plankton plant materials, which when they die, consume oxygen in the water. The result, a massive low oxygen dead zone in the northwest shelf of the Black Sea, and significant loss of local species and livelihoods from tourism, fisheries, and other sectors. UNDP, we took a three-step approach to trying to help the Black Sea Danube countries restore this critical ecosystem. First was the identification of the main pollution sources. Second was development of an investment portfolio to help make the necessary investments to clean up these pollution hotspots. And third was support to policy and regulatory and institutional reform to strengthen the institutions needed to manage and improve the Danube and the Black Sea. A critical element of UNDP GF support was strengthening cooperation between the 17 countries that share the Danube Black Sea Basin by building the capacity and promoting the sustainability of the emerging Danube and Black Sea Commissions and their secretariats. The Danube River Basin is the most international river basin in the world. There's no other river basin with so many countries. Without the UNDP GF support, it is clear that the countries of the region would not have been able to come together and organize themselves in the framework of the uh, convention, the Danube River Protection Convention, and in particular to have the kind of commitment that exists to this institution, which is worldwide recognized as uh, uh, one of the best examples of transboundary water cooperation. We're standing in front of the wastewater facility of the city of Sarajevo. This was heavily damaged during the Balkan conflict in the early 1990s. And although it did treat the water previously because of the conflict, that treatment capacity was pretty much lost. And in that ensuing period, all the water uh, that, that is coming from the city of Sarajevo, all the wastewater, is, is returning to these rivers virtually untreated. And so uh, one of the many investments that the Pollution Reduction Program identified was the investment needs to uh, re refurbish this plant so it can begin treating the water again. Along with untreated wastewater, another important source of phosphorus pollution was the widespread use of phosphate-containing detergents. So the Danube Regional Project supported, uh, with a very small grant, about $10,000, a campaign to increase awareness of the negative effects of phosphate-containing detergents. We shared 20,000 leaflets uh, in the front of shopping center to ladies when they go inside and uh, we create a list of detergents which is uh, environmental friendly, which is not. We just trying to, with small change in people's behaviors when they go to shopping and uh, choosing detergents. We consider that our campaign it was very successful because we see that people much more buying uh, detergents without phosphorus. Phosphor in all rivers is something that uh, regular people don't see. They see just a dirty river and a polluted river, but they don't know that they can change that in everyday things like a shopping. Kad pada kiša, pošto ovde ima velika osobna jama, dole, trebalo je da se sve sliva unutra i odavde da se crpi osoka, a odande od napred da se utovarivačem tovori taj stajnjak i da se odnosi na... This manure pit was funded under the UNDP GF Danube program. It's a pilot project and uh, one of the purposes of it was to isolate the manure from getting all the nitrogen it contains, ammonia, urea, uh, into the local tributaries and ultimately into Danube River. This is so critical to the Danube because something on the order of half the Nitrogen that reaches the Danube is from farming practices, both excess use of, of fertilizers, but also inappropriate management of manure. This manure contains very uh, heavy concentrations of ammonia and urea in particular, which is nitrogen, 
uh, which he can then later use in a slurry that he collects off the bottom as fertilizer back into his crops. So here we can see the results where the farmer has applied the manure slurry correct collected back at the farm to this amazing crop of uh, sugar beets, very productive, very bountiful crop. And so basically by using the manure slurry, this farmer has been able to reduce his, his use of um, conventional fertilizers by as much as 70%. So again, he gets cost savings, cost recovery, and he still gets a very healthy crop. And it helps revitalize the soils. It keeps the soils organically healthy, rejuvenated, so that he can do crop after crop year after year. So what's been the impact? What's been the result of all this investment in cleaning up the Danube and things like phasing out phosphorus detergents and restoring wetlands and cleaning up some of the industry that pollute the Danube? And the result is a good one. The Black Sea's dead zone has virtually disappeared. Key habitats have reclaimed the seabed. Many species considered locally extinct have returned and local livelihoods that depend on a healthy Black Sea are starting to recover. As populations and economies continue to grow around the world, the occurrence of these dead zones is skyrocketing. The restoration of the Danube River and the Black Sea represents one of the first successful reversals of a dead zone, with many valuable lessons and experience for other regions to draw from.